This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse seven, and it says, "It read, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed." All right, Brekat the Yahweh, Brekat the Yahweh Shai. All right, Brekat the Yahweh, Brekat the Yahweh Shai, Brekat the Yahweh, Brekat the Yahweh Shai. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Wadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone with Ruwell. And I want to give a peace, greetings, and salutations to all the Legakim that's pushing his word in the truth and sincerity, you know, throughout the, throughout the four corners of the earth. You know, and the brothers that's not wavering in the faith, you know, being diligent in his truth. You know, I say shalom to you, brothers, you know. And I say shalom, you know, to the few sisters that believe in all meekness and humbleness. You know, I say shalom. You know, uh, I'm your brother Zakaria from GMS Miami Camp. And Lord willing, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash, you know, uh, Adawan Ratazah, you know, that means Lord willing, you know, so Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to the elect of the nation Israel, you know, and my lesson today, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash, is going to be basing on faith without works is dead, all right? You got to show your faith by having the works, man, all right? By you doing the work, by you prophesying, all right, you making your body a living sacrifice. That's showing that's showing that you truly believe. All right. And this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine and verse seven. Again, it says in everyone that shall be saved, meaning being delivered. All right. Because we're not saved right now. All right. The people in the churches, all right, they believe they are saved. No, we're not saved. We're going to the ultimate. The salvation is coming when our Lord Yahweh Shai comes back and gather the elect of the nation Israel and the nation Israel. All you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. All right. Also, the Israelite foreigners that scattered amongst the nations, that lineage go back to the 12 tribes according to their fathers, all right? The Lord is going to beam up the elect in a so-called UFO, all right? And they're going to escape the nuclear destruction, all right? 200 million nuclear warheads going to hit Babylon the Great, which is America, all right? There's going to be a third world's war, so missiles going to be shot throughout the four corners of Earth. And the only way, the only way the elect is going to survive, all right, that fire is by the Lord beaming them up. Let's get a preset right quick. in Jeremiah. This book of Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20 says, the harvest is past, the summer is in it, and we are not saved. All right, we're not saved yet. All right. The salvation is coming when our Lord Yahweh shall return. That's his name. Yahweh Shah. Yah meaning he. Yahweh Shah meaning Savior deliver. The Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh. Right, who the world English called God. All right, Yahweh, his name means he to be or he, he to be or he exists. All right, that's who the world ignorantly called God, and Yahweh Shah is who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, man. Second Ezra 9 and 7, and everyone that shall be saved, all right, the elect, and shall be able to escape, escape what? The nuclear destruction. All right, scripture say, um, it's like it. Bug out. Um, said the righteous shall scarcely be saved. This book of First Peter, chapter 4, and verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, all right, the righteous is going to scarcely be saved. They're going to escape the, the destruction, man. Where, sorry, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The righteous is going to be scarcely saved. Let's get this revelation. Revelation 11 and verse 12. It says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. This is the Lord gathering the elect up in the, in the chariot, so called UFO. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, a so called UFO. And their enemies beheld them. So the, the elect will be beamed up. And as it says in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, the strangeness of their salvation. All right. Because the salvation is going to be far beyond what these people look for. All right. All right. The, the, the lowly people of the earth being delivered in a spectacular manner, man. And they are sitting up to heaven in a cloud in a so-called UFO. And their enemies beheld them. So their enemies are our enemies. All right. These heathens, mainly Esau, Edom, and two-thirds of our people, they're going to see the, the salvation of the elect. All right. 
And our Lord Yahweh, he's coming back in the cloud. Acts the first chapter, he says, the same way, the same way that Yahweh left, it's the same way that he's coming back. All right. Verse 13, in the same hour there was a great earthquake. What is that earthquake? All right, that's 200 million nuclear missiles, I mean nuclear warheads hitting this place, Babylon. Because he's talking about the destruction of Babylon. And the 10th part of the city fell. All right, talking about America, because what FEMA has, all right, America's divided in 10 regions. And in the earthquake was slain the men 7,000, 7,000, 7 meaning completion. All right. So a complete amount of people are going to be destroyed. If you was living on the swords of America, you know, I probably let you going to die here, man. It says in the remnant war frightened and gave glory to the power of heaven. So simultaneously as the miss as the missiles being shot down, the Lord is going to beam up the elect. That's how they're going to escape. All right. It says in the remnant war frightened the, the elect. They was afraid because why? That was a that was a intense a, a time, man. All right, all right, there you go. All right, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the power of heaven, man. Verse fourteen: the second one was passed, and the third woe coming quickly. As World War One, World War Two is passed, and the third woe, meaning World War Three, is coming quickly. All right, and we're in the 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 World War Three is brewing up right now you see the powers all right has their missiles all right you see the war games you see the war drills all right you see the different sanctions that's all leading up to those missiles being shot out verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his anointed and he shall reign forever and ever so this world this war and his deliverance is leading up to the king well this world war Three is leading up to the, the to the kingdom of heaven being established, man. Because the Lord is going to come back with a great deliverance to gather the elect, who the ones who've been showing their faith by their works, man. All right, all right. So let's go back to Second Ezra. Second Ezra nine and verse seven says, "And everyone that shall be saved and, and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall see." Shall be slot shall be shall be preserved Salakia from the said perils. So they're gonna be preserved. This um Isaiah twenty or twenty six Isaiah twenty six and twenty, I believe. You know, Isaiah twenty six and verse twenty says, "Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers." Talking about the the, the chariots and shut the door about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Until the indignation be overpassed, meaning the, the 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 flaming fire, the vengeance of the Lord be overpassed, because the Lord is doing this because of the wickedness of the earth. For behold, the Lord coming out of His place, out of His place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So the Lord is coming back to punish the inhabitants of the earth. But He said. The, the elect is going to be in the in the chamber, which is written representing the cha uh, chariot, all right, until the wrath of the Lord be overpassed. All right, just how when the Lord told Noah to build an ark, all right, he the Lord told Noah that he was going to destroy the the earth by flood, and Noah built the ark and he was preserved, all right, from that flood from that first death. But now this fire is going to be the second death, man. All right. Second Ezra 9 and 8 shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. All right, because why? We're going to go back to the land. The Lord going to put a law session of commandments in our inward part. All right, and we're going to, He's going to deliver us back into our land, the land of Israel. And within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So the elect was ordained from the beginning to receive this salvation. But they're going to have works. All right, so let's get this, James 2, and we'll close out. Is book of James chapter 2 in verse 14 it says what doth it profit if, well, sorry, what does it profit my brethren though a man say he have faith and have not works can faith save him yeah you say you got faith but you don't got no works that's these that's these people in the world man these these pseudo Israelites man they know that they know they're Israelites but they would not go out on the highways or byways man they would not put up lessons all right. So you ain't showing no works, man. All right. The Lord said that which uh, 
uh, our Lord Yahweh Shai, I have finished the work. It is finished. Let's get that. The Lord was doing works, man. Um, this book of John chapter 19 and verse 30. It says, when Yahweh shot, therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bound his head and gave up the spirit. All right. So let's go. Um, the Lord said, my work. No, he said, my meat. Meet the father. John 6. And the Lord said, Believe me, just believe me for the work's sake, man. Bear with me. He said, My meat, my meat. Ooh. This is the book of John chapter 4 verse 34 It says Yehoshua saith unto them My meat is to do the will of him that sent me And to finish his work You know what I'm saying Say ye not there are yet four months And then cometh harvest Behold I say unto you Lift up your eyes and look on the fields For they are white already to harvest Alright Meaning you gotta do this work now all right, the, the, the harvest is ready, man. And he that reapers receives wages and gathers fruit unto eternal life. But he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. All right. Uh, verse 37. And where and herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestow no labor, other men's labor, and ye have entered into their labors. Yeah, so the apostles and the elders, they've been laboring, they've been working, and when we woke up, we entered into their labors. All right? So faith without works is dead. Let's continue on, John. I mean, James, so like James chapter 2. In verse 14, What do it profit if my brethren, though a man say he have work, say he have faith and have not works, can he be saved? What Paul said Paul, Apostle Paul said um, I have finished the course I fought a good fight Therefore is it Therefore is a crown laid up for me You know And roughly praising Those who's who's happy at his coming You know roughly paraphrasing man Alright The apostles and the, and the disciples They did the work man Verse 15 If a brother or sister be naked And destitute of daily food And one of you say unto them Depart in peace be ye warm and fill, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Him? Yeah, man. All right, there they don't have clothes, they don't have food, and you just tell them to go in peace, but you don't give them food or clothes. All right, what what is that profiting them? Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone, man. All right. You truly gonna show your faith by your works, man. All right, verse eighteen. Yea, a man may say, "Thou hast faith, and I have works." Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So that's how we show our faith by the works. All right, all right. Uh, thou believest that there is one power; thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac the son upon the altar? All right. Seeing thou, seeing how thou, so seeing thou how faith wrought uh, with his works. So I'll read it again. So I can verse 22, James 2 and 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by faith was and by works was faith made perfect all right 
So he was going to sacrifice Isaac because the Lord told him to. And his faith by him, by him doing that, showing that, showing that he was about to do it. That showed that he truly believed, man. All right. Verse 23. The scripture was fulfilled with said <clears throat> Abraham believed Yahweh and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of the most high. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and has sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. All right. So Lord, when this lesson was edifying, you got to have the faith in your works, man. So Lord, when this lesson was edifying, Edifying, and I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone with Ruel. And I want to give all peace, greetings, and salutations to all the Lekakim that's pushing his word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom, Akim, keep pushing, keep doing Shalom.